In this video, I'm going to show you the new release tool from OpenAI called AgentKit, where it's going to be very, very similar to the no-code AI automation tools like NAN or DeFi, Zapiers, and we're going to walk you through how we're going to create our first AI agents using this tool, how we can be able to choose our models, how we can be able to add our different tools like knowledge base and MCB servers that we can integrate onto this automation workflow. And by the end of this video, you will know exactly how we can set this up, be able to create your first automation workflow and your AI agents using this tool. So with that being said, if you're interested, let's get into it. All right, so before we jump in, a quick intro for those who are new here. My name is Eric, and I have spent years as a senior software engineer at companies like Amazon, AWS, and Microsoft. And I have started this YouTube channel to share everything I have learned along the way, from AI encoding to automations, Web3, career developments, and more, all broken down into practical tutorials that you can actually follow. So if you're ready to level up, make sure to check out my YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button. Now let's get back to the video. So first let's take a look at how the agent kit from OpenAI works. So here you can see that this is the OpenAI agent platform and basically it's very similar to the NAN or DeFi where we can be able to use a canvas to be able to build our workflow or AI agents on that canvas without any code. And the process is very similar where in the building process, we might have like an AI model, which is chose by the open AI, like GPT-5 or GPT-4.1. And we also can be able to have a list of tools that we can choose from like web search or be able to call a database or be able to interact with any other tools. Or we can also be able to pass any prompts for the models and also guardrails on how we can be able to monitor the workflow. And then eventually we can use that to deploy this whole thing. We can also be able to further optimize this as well. But I think what really separates the open AI agent kit from other platforms like NAN or DeFi is that you not only can be able to build the agent workflow with the canvas in a visual first way, but you can also be able to start with a code first to be able to build the agents using their agents SDK to be able to build the code first. And then you can also convert it back to the canvas mode to be able to see the agents workflow visually. So here you can see below here, it says that SDKs with Node, Python, Go, right, with type safe libraries. And you can also be able to visualize that with the agent builder to be able to drag and drop different nodes and be able to translate that back to code if we want to. So clearly you can see that both of those things have increased their flexibilities in terms of how we want to build our AI agents. Now here, in terms of the built-in tools, definitely does not have a lot of option compared to other tools like NAN or DeFi. Clearly you can see that we're using the web search functionality from OpenAI and also file search, image generations, code interpreters, computer use, and connect to any other MCPs, which pretty much are the tools that we have. So with that being said, let's take a look at how we can be able to use this. So first thing first, I'm just gonna click on login. And here I'm just gonna select the API platform. All right, so once we click on the platform, here you can see platform.openai.com, right? So here inside of this, if we were to scroll down or we can also just search, but here usually inside of the agent sections, we have a build agents section, right? So we're just gonna click on the subsections and then we're just gonna select the agent builder. So here we're just gonna click on open agent builder, or you can just simply just go to platform.openai.com slash agent builder right here. So here you can see that we have the options to create a workflow. So build a chat agent workflow with a custom logic and tools. So in that case, we're just gonna build a workflow from scratch. All right, so right inside of our new workflow here, you can see that we have two nodes. One is the start node and the other one is my agents. So here, this is the start. So that's gonna be the start of the workflow. And then here is my agents. So here inside of my agent, you can see that we can give it a name. For example, we can call this Bob, for example, right? Or it could be like a specialist agents, like a AI email writer, right? So for example, like AI email writer, and then here we can also be able to set the system prompts on the instructions for what this large language model or this AI agent should do, right? So that's gonna be the system prompts. And then we also have our memory. So what is the past conversations that we have with this agents? So it's gonna keep track of that for the past conversation on the chat history. So that's kind of like the memory on the past conversation that we have so far. And then there's also the model. So for example, we can use GPT-5, we can use GPT-5 Pro, right? We can also use some, some other models that we have um, options from, right? So these are all from um, OpenAI. And then here we also have the reason effort and basically we set it to low. What it means for reasoning here is that basically if we set it to low, that will consume less tokens, right? Because it will be less thinking time and faster response. So we can be able to choose that depends on our needs. And then there's also tools. So we can be able to add additional tools like MCP servers, file search, or if there's like a local functions, like a code function that we want to call, or if there's like a custom tool that we can call, we can also integrate it there as well. Okay, and then there's also the output format. So for example, we can output as a text, JSON, or a widget. Okay, so for demonstration, we're just gonna choose text for now. And then here, we're just gonna click on preview. 
Okay, so here I'm just gonna provide the prompt saying that please write me an email for taking a day off for work. Obviously, I did not provide any instructions or system prompts. So I'm just gonna send this request and let's see what it does here. All right, so here you can see that we get an error because currently we don't have any credits inside of our billing. All right, so in that case, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go to the overview for the billing page. And here I'm just gonna add some additional credits to demonstrate this video. All right, so I just add $5 here just for demonstration here. All right, so in that case, back to preview, I'm just gonna say hi again. Hopefully this will work. Awesome, so now you can see that I just say hi again, and here you can see that this is the response we get from the agents, which here says, hi, how can I help you today? Okay, awesome. So once we have demonstrated this, that it's working, what we can do now is we can be able to explore some tools that the AI agent has. So here I'm just gonna color the LM here for the node, just not to confuse ourselves. And then here we're just going to click on tools and see what are some options we have. So let's try to explore the how we can be able to add our knowledge base into our agent kit workflow. So in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to select the file search option from the OpenAI. And here we're just going to click on file search. And here what we can do is we're going to be able to upload some documents, use that as a knowledge base to retrieve relevant information. So for example, I just upload a file for my channel information, right? So here I'm just going to click on attach and it basically is going to attach this information as knowledge base for the vector search. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to make sure to save this, click on publish. I'm just gonna say that this is gonna be a test workflow and click on publish. Awesome, so the workflow is published. We can always be able to use this, but we can also use that to save. Awesome, so in that case, let's try to test it out to see if it works. So here you can see that I click on the preview for the test. So here I'm just gonna ask a simple question, like what is the channel's uh, main focus? So here I'm just gonna add this question. And if we were to look at the MD file, which is this is the one, and here you can see that it contains the channel focus or the content focus here, right? So this is the answer, the channel name, the language, the channel type. So let's take a look at you know what it does here. So you can see that the LM here start to do some reasoning, start to search the files to find the answer for what is the channel focus, right? So these are some questions that it's asking. So here you can see that we have the answer, which is the Eric Tech is focused on the AI automations, software development, career growth, and productivity tools. Awesome. So here that you can see that we can be able to attach knowledge base onto the large language model here for the AI agents to be able to retrieve those information. All right, so now we know how we can be able to use the knowledge search functionality inside of our workflow for the agent Git. So now let's take a look at how we can be able to add our MCP servers functionalities inside of our workflow. So let's say if we want to add search functionality, for example. So let's say if I were to click on the LM. So let's say if I want to add a search functionalities, we can click on tools and be able to use the web search functionality from OpenAI. But let's say if we don't want to use that, we want to use like maybe a third party um, MCP servers for web search, maybe like Tavly. Then what we can do is we can click on the MCP server here to connect our desired MCP server. So here we're just gonna click on MCP server. So here you can see that we have a list of servers that we can choose from like Gmail, like SharePoints or some third party servers that are also accessible that we can use as well. But obviously right now here you can see that these are all the servers that we have, which is really limited. So if I wanna add a server, we can just click on add server here. And here you can see that we can simply just paste the URL and also the authentications to connect our MCP server with the agent kit. So in this case for this demonstration, I'm just gonna use Tavly here for the MCP server demonstration. Here I'm just gonna click on get API key. And the way how we can be able to use Tavly MCP server here is that it says here in the doc for remote MCP server, we can simply just copy the URL here and paste the API key here. So here I'm just gonna copy this. So in this case, I'm just gonna come back to agent builder and paste the URL here. And I'm just gonna get the API key and fill it in. So I'm just gonna come to the Tavly API platform. And here you can see that there's option for us to copy the API key. I'm just gonna copy this and come back to Agent Builder, paste the key there. And then below here, I'm just gonna click on none for the authentications. And in terms of label, we're just gonna name it this to be Tavly, and we're just gonna click on connect. So here you can see this is gonna try to establish the connections. And here you can see that these are all the tools that we have, like the search, extract, crawl informations, and so much more. Okay, so now what we can do is we're gonna click on add. And here you can see that in terms of tools, we have our Tavly and our knowledge base for Eric Tech. All right, so now what we can do is we can be able to click on preview to test it. Let's say if I wanna search for why is Bitcoin down today? And for your reference, I'm just gonna say October 10, 2025. And then here I'm just gonna click on enter. Let's see what the large language model here does. All right, so here you can see the start to use the Tavly search functionality to search for the related terms for the query that we're looking to search. So here I'm just gonna approve this. And then the large language model here asks for another permission for the Tavly extract functionality. So it's gonna extract information from the site. So here I'm just gonna click on approve to extract those information. All right, so with a couple approval for the Tavly extract. So here you can see that it starts to search for other sites 
and then here you can see that after it starts to extract and search the sites, it has gathered the results and found the answer. So the short version is that on the October 10th, after US escalate its trade war with China, here is what happens, right? So the drop also came just days after the BTC hits its new time high. So the profit taking and the cool phase added to the move, right? So that's basically what causes the drop. And there's also like detailed explanations on where it found the resource and so much more, right? So pretty much you can see that we can use the MCB server tools instead of AI agents from our OpenAI agent kits. So now if we were to, you know, publish this, making sure that we save this, right? We can also save this in a new version. All right, so back to the workflow, let's take a look at what are some other options we have. So just like any other, you know, no code AI automation tools, we have the option for if else statements, right? So we can add a if, we can add a while loop, we can also add a user approval. Uh, there's also guardrail, which can basically help us to monitor our system, making sure that there's no hallucination checks or moderations, right, the content, and be able to do some filtering for the response that the AI generates. And there's also like sticky notes that we can be able to keep our text or workflow much more organized. We can also do that. And also there's some data transformations like reshaping the data or setting variables like set state, right, assigning variables or values to a workflow state. So we can also do that. And uh, let's also take a look at the most powerful thing, which is also how we can be able to convert this, what we have so far into code, right? Into how we can be able to use this with the agent SDK. So here I'm just gonna click on code. And if I were to click on the agent's SDK, here you can see that it's gonna be the full code on everything that we have just done in the canvas. So, so things like the MCP connections or the file search connections. And then here's the large language model, right? So these are, are the tools that we have added. The model that we're gonna use, this is the instruction for the system prompts. And then here is the model settings. So the reason we set to low. So pretty much you can see that we can get a code for this for what we have designed inside of our canvas. Okay. All right. So pretty much that's it for this video. So just to summarize everything, we went over how we can be able to set up our agent kit from OpenAI and also how we can be able to use our agent kit to build our simple AI agent workflow and how we can be able to use the tools and be able to use different models and things like how we can be able to add our knowledge base, our MCB tools, and so much more. So if you do feel value in this video, please make sure to like this video, consider subscribing for more content like this. But with that being said, I I will see you in the next video.